Hi all, Finney here from Finney's Homebrew Emporium. Happy Homebrew Wednesday. I uh, hope everyone's enjoying their week. Um, I'm just doing my smash beer for um, our, our Homebrew Groups competition that's in January. So what I'm doing is I'm going to try and do an English IPA with Vienna Malt as the base and East Kent Goldings as the hop. So what I've done, I've got my mash set over here um, and you're actually sitting on the sparge water. You're on my pot at the moment. Um, so the idea is, I'm going to take, uh, there's probably about, there's four and a half litres went into the mash, because remember the I only do the gallon, um, gallon brews, um, and I'm going to take that, the mash, put it into the sparge water and let it sit for another 10-15 minutes, um, and in the meantime, I'm going to use the runnings from that, um, and boil it down and try and create some Maillard reactions and get some caramelness into the um, into the beer, so that way I pick up hopefully the toastiness and the um, from the Vienna malt as the being the base, and then those extra caramel bits hopefully come through um, and create that you know the sweetness to balance some of the bitterness and the malts that we've got. So um, I also tested the pH um, when I did it. So at the start, the pH at 20. I haven't done the adjustments yet for temperature, but at 20. Six degrees um, without salt additions the mash pH would have been at room temperature 6.3 uh, which is really high um, which you know would have been like 6.1 at, at mash temperature so the adjusted calc um, the adjusted one got down to 5.8 so it, it's still a little bit high but not as high as it would have been so it's, it's changed it a wee bit um, so hopefully that's made you know made it Tastes good, and obviously that also is increasing the parts per million of calcium and everything for um, for yeast health. So it's good; it's quite interesting to see the difference that uh, the salt additions are making, um, which is great. So I'm going to carry on, get this sparging done, um, and hopefully I'll show you me boiling down the um, the first ranks. Catch you in a minute. Oops, um, add a customer. In the meantime, I boiled over. Damn you! So we're getting even more reactions. Oh well, I'll clean this up. Um, I don't seem to have lost too much, but it's you know wet water going over an electrical item. I'll turn it off, clean it up, and start again. Okay, so we're all cleaned back up. So this is how much we're starting with. It's roughly about three liters. Uh, there's a little mark on the pot here that was three liters. Three liters. So um, I'm going to boil this for a wee bit, and then we'll see what we get to. Um, so you can see it's starting to come to the boil a bit better now. Um, so bear with us. So to buy the power of film, this is about a quarter of an hour later. So you can see from the rings on the top, it's boiled down a wee bit. Um, and we've got a nice, nice boil going on here. Um, so we'll just keep doing this until I feel we've done enough. Um, and we'll carry on. Um, I'm just bringing up the main part up to the boil now. We've got this is like the reduced bit, um, although we're going to reduce it a bit further because by the looks of it, I've got probably a bit too much in there, and um, that's only at 60 something at the So we'll let that boil. All I've got in here is the grains. I've put the grains back in and added some boiled water um, to bring it back up to around that 75 degrees centigrade because I want it up around 160 to 170 um, to try and pasteurize this because the spent grain that's in there I'm going to try and grow some oyster mushrooms on. Um, a while ago I bought some oyster mushrooms from the shop just across the way and, and made it run in some cardboard and Initially I thought it was bung, but um, it's looking like it's it's actually worked, so I want to move it on to the next step. So I'm going to use some spent grain from today and add the card inoculated cardboard with all that mycelium grown for it into it um, in one of the Gladfield bags. Um, and then we'll see if we can get some oyster mushrooms grown, which would be great. It'd be really cool. Um, so keep you. I'll show you what I've done eventually at the end and we'll keep a track of it and see how it goes. Here we are, here's the brew. Uh, it's got a bit of trouble at the bottom but um, 
apart from that, everything went all right. Um, still trying to get used to the amount we get out of this, uh, the new boiler. Um, so I think I boiled for a wee bit too long. Um, gravity's right uh, for the beer, but yeah, we're just a wee bit. We're only probably about half litre short, so we're not far off. Um, although we've taken a lot of truck through, so yeah, it's all learning progress. Uh, I think I've got to brew tomorrow and do my specialty ingredient AM brew, which we got Christmas cake, so that'll be a laugh. Um, I think what I'll do is use a bit of Christmas cake during the boil, and then I'm going to do a tincture with all the spices and everything um, in some sherry and use that. So I, hope I might get some footage of that um, before we finish. But, uh, but this is the smash beer. So I'm just waiting for this yeast to rehydrate itself and then I'll give it a good old shake. And then we'll put it into the water bath and let it do its thing over the next couple of days. Well, a couple of weeks. Well, yeah, so you saw during when I was doing the boil that we had the the grains, everything sitting at higher degrees just to sort of kill off anything for an hour. Um, so we've done that and we've drained it off. Um, so at the moment, in here somewhere, is um, the grains. So like I've basically gone through and squeezed, squeezed as much as I can out of it while you know, it hurts because it's still quite hot. Um, so I'm just going to let that cool down now for a bit. Um, so get any nasties in it. Let that cool down and I'll then try and squeeze a bit more out. And uh, there wasn't much left in there, but you don't want it too moist when you're growing the substrate. And after that, I'll get it into a, one of the Gladfield see-through bags, uh, seal it up so there's just a little bit poking out the top, uh, and then get some or something to shove in the top end to keep all the bugs out. But let the, a bit of CO2 sort of come in and out. Um, but I'll show you that once I've got it sorted, um, and hopefully. We'll be able to do a video later on to show you the mycelia growing through it. Right, yeah, so this is morning after. Um, we can see that we've got a nice sort of crowsing on top there, bubbling away at about 18. Um, and what I've just been doing, the grain that I had sorted, I've cooled it down and it's now in the bag. Um, I ran some star sand through the bag first. Um, just, you know, make sure. If we're going to try it, we might as well, you know, try and be as sanitary as we can. Um, tip for new beginners: um, don't. I've sealed the bag to like make it more of a funnel shape, but do that afterwards because it makes it really hard to get the grain in. Don't ask. So what I've got here is this is what I started. Or um, get some light on the matter. Um, or. Oh, it's a few months ago now. I actually have the original video. It's just a, it was like a proof of concept, really. But so um, in here, you can see there's like mycelia growing, and like it's even starting to try and fruit. Um, so what I did was took some um, cardboard and got some oyster mushroom. I'll try and post if I can dig out the video um, of what I did. But basically, you you know you soak. The, the cardboard for a bit and try and kill off you know, as much as you can at the same temperatures as you did the grain yesterday um, and then yeah you put it um, you know layer it up the idea being between the corrugated lets a bit of air through um, and you just literally get oyster mushroom um, I what I did is like cut it in half so you can get all the bits out in the middle and sort of just lay them across and you know layer it up you know, three or four pieces or, you know, six pieces to a layer. Do three or four layers, um, and then, yeah. What happens is, because you damage, you're damaging the, the mushroom, what I understand, it gets the mycelia to run, uh, and then you get this sort of thing. So, um, you've got to get some sort of air transfer in it, though. I think that's what I thought would made it fun, because initially it smelt quite a bit, and I don't know. But, um... It's it's that smell's gone away now. I, I've aerated it a couple of times, probably because I've just been you know interested in looking in. But uh, and then when that fruiting started, I was like, oh, well, it's actually working. So um, I'm gonna see if it's transferable. You know, it's a proof of concept really to the to the bag. 
Um, so I'll get cracking on with stripping some of this, putting it into there and inoculating that um, and see where we go from there. Who knows? You brewers out there with all that spent grain, we may be able to get something useful out of it. There you go, I've just taken the first layer off and you can see, you know, those spots are where the the bits of, of the oyster mushroom went and you can see they're just like, try and take the light off you can get it better. Um, you can see this, you know, the uh, the mycelia spiring out from it. So it's cool. So I'm gonna sort of probably cut around those, um, or just rip them up, chuck them in the bag because they're like new nucleation points. Then yeah, you can see this little dude is trying to make actual mushrooms. So we might just leave that corner and just see if that fruits, uh, and use sort of this side to do the experiment. Right, yeah, so we've got a bit of a bung here at the top for a bit of air exchange and you can probably see in there there's bits of the cardboard that's sort of sitting in the grain and so I'll try and shuffle that around a bit more so it, um, so it works but um, yeah, who knows, we'll see hopefully in the next couple of weeks if we uh, start to get some mycelia go through it, if we do we'll poke some holes in the side or maybe like just looking at how much is in it, I may fill it up um, with a bit more stuff and maybe use this to inoculate a slightly bigger uh, bag. You can, um, what I've seen, people starting them growing on um, coffee grounds and stuff that they then inoculate a really big um, like bucket, uh, which would be good. So we'll see, we'll see if it works first and if it does, great. Um, and the other little bit, um, I'm just gonna leave here and see if this actually fruits to anything um, and then eat because that's what it's about so until next week happy homebrew wednesday um, and have a drink catch you soon